there you are cruising along your spreadsheet and then BAM! Only works with contiguous date selections. What the f does that mean? Looking at our date table, we can see we're missing 923, and then a whole whopping 925 through 101. When you start building out a data model in Excel, one of the most important tables you can build is that of a calendar table. Welcome to how to make a calendar table using the M language in Excel or Power BI. In this example, we're going to use Excel to build our calendar table. If you're in Power BI, it does not matter. The syntax is the exact same. First things first though, we need to load our current table into a new query. So we're gonna to go to our data tab and we're gonna select from table. If we look at this column date, we see a date, we see a time. In our current information, we only have a date. So let's go ahead and right click this column and we're gonna do a change type and we're gonna set it to date. If we get a prompt change column type, we see a step already exists. So let's go ahead and replace that current just have that updated. And now we're gonna select close and load in the top left. We're gonna click the downward arrow and select the close and load two, three ellipses. We're gonna choose only create connection. And I'm gonna go ahead and turn off this add this data to the data model. We do not need that for right now. Let's go ahead and hit load. We will now see that this has been added to our query pane. So let's go ahead and do a new query. So we're gonna select this, we're gonna do from other sources and we're gonna do a blank query. Excellent. So time to write some M language. We're going to do it equals. We're going to do list dot min. That is our minimum value. Open parenthesis. We're going to type in our date table. So that was the name of our table in our previous example. And then the column is that of date. D-A-T-E. Close square bracket. Close parenthesis. Hit enter. Oh, it's magic. 922-2017. That is our lowest minimum value there. So let's go ahead and do FX right here. It's going to do added step. And instead of store, source, we're going to go ahead and start out again. So just our equals, we're going to do list dot max, open parenthesis, date table once again, square bracket, date column, square bracket closed, close parenthesis, hit enter. Our maximum date is 12, 27, 2017. Instead of this custom one though, I'm going to go over here and right click I'm going to rename this. I'm going to choose source underscore max. And I'm going to hit enter. And we're going to do add another step, fx. Instead of source max, I'm going to get rid of that. And I'm going to type list.dates. Open parenthesis. And I want to start with my minimum date. So that's called source over here in my applied steps pane. And I'm going to do a comma. And I'm going to select duration.days. I'm going to type in source underscore max because that was the name of my step over here. And I'm going to do minus source, close parentheses, and I'm going to do plus one, comma. And I'm going to do hashtag duration, one day, zero hours, zero minutes, zero seconds. Close parentheses, close parentheses, hit enter. It was magic. 922 all the way through 1227. Now creating a couple of steps. I want to go ahead and convert this over to a table. So open our transform, I'm going to do two table. And I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. We do not have any delimiters. Fantastic. I'm going to right click this column now and change type. I'm going to select date. We now see our calendar up here at the top. And I'm going to go ahead and type in column one, call it date. Hit close and load. And I'm going to select Close and load two. I'm going to create a table in my t uh, workbook and I'm going to deselect add this data to the data model. Hit load. And we now see we have 922 through 1227. If all you cared about was the syntax, please feel free to check out more of my videos now. If you would prefer a deeper understanding of why you did the things you did, let me go ahead and Eli five it for you. If you remember in the previous example, I had you convert the date table to be a date only. In this example, I went ahead and reverted back to both date and time, just as we continue to talk about all the complexity. First things first though, let's go back to our data tab. We're gonna do new query from other sources, blank query. Normally, whenever we think about our spreadsheets, we think about the text and numbers that we can store within them. If you think about the dates in Excel, you kind of at this point may realize that they're stored as a serial number. For this example though, we're gonna kind of look at the different categories that the M language is able to use to kind of tap into the different resources within your workbook. 
For this example, we're going to use equals list dot min open parenthesis date table and then the date column. Date and time is what it's returned. The min function performs the exact same way as it does within the normal just Excel spreadsheet. Let's go ahead and do uh, add step and we're going to use list dot max. M language is case sensitive, so capital M, lowercase a, lowercase x. The date table, if you don't remember the name of your queries, you can click over here on the side just to look those up. So date table, square bracket, date column, square bracket, close parenthesis. If you wanted to edit the, the return value here, you can still use nested functions. So let's try date.from list.max. Just like that, we're able to remove the time series. We can change date to time dot from, return 12 a.m. Not really very helpful, it's just returning a blank. Or if you wanted to convert it over to a serial number, just use number dot from 43096. So let's go ahead and remove that though. List.max. In our previous example, we changed this to source underscore max. If you want to do a space, you better start getting ready to use the hashtag quotation quotation for your references. Let's perform some basic subtraction from our source date, source max minus source. We now see the return value of 96.00 colon 00 colon 00. This is returning days, hours, minutes, and seconds. Kind of going back here, we can do duration dot days if we only want to return our days 96. We could also do number dot from we just want to return that 96. Let's go ahead and rebuild that list dot dates equals list dot dates from our source. We're gonna do hashtag source max minus source. Our duration we now know is days, hours minutes, seconds, close parenthesis, close parenthesis, hit enter, bam. Oh, we cannot convert the value date time to type date. All right, so going back to our source, we now remember that this was stored as a date time. We want to change that to be a date dot from source. We only want the date value. All right, well now it's giving us another one. We cannot convert the value duration, which is 96. That was our source max minus source to a type of number. So let's try to do number dot from source max minus source, close parenthesis. Awesome. Everything's looking good. 922 through 1226. Our max value is 1227. Going back to our custom here, we're gonna do that plus one. Now scroll to the bottom. 12, 27, 2017. So thinking about how you approach your problems, it's always best to set your data correctly. So in our previous query, we change it from date time to date only. That way we can avoid all of these nested functions to optimize our code a lot better. Our number dot from, we could also just change duration dot days if we only wanted to get the days value because we know our duration is days, hours, minutes, seconds. You've done all the hard work, let's now reap the reward. Up in our transform, let's convert this to a table. We're gonna go ahead and hit okay, there's no delimiters. And now we're gonna do an add column. So we can select date, we can add our year. We can select date on column one, one after selecting, we can select month. Date once again, select the quarter. Date, week. the day of the week and the weekday name of the day excellent just like that you've now built a full calendar table congratulations